She wandered back to her own apartment, going by way of the deck to see if anyone was swimming. No one was. What was the use of having a pool if nobody went in it? Mrs. G had finally turned off the TV and was picking up her garbage to take it to the kitchen. Katie was disappointed. She hoped it would still be in the living room when Monica came home so Mrs. G would be fired. Well, so long, kiddo, Mrs. G said after she dumped her dirty dishes into the sink and the rinds, cores, and peelings into the garbage can. I'll see you tomorrow. It was absurd that Monica should pay the woman to come here and sit and watch TV and eat Monica's groceries all day. She hadn't paid any attention to Katie at all. She hadn't even asked where she'd been the hour or more she'd spent across in the apartment across the hall. What good was she? Katie stood on the balcony and watched unhappily as Mrs. G tottered off to the corner to catch her bus. She intended to come back. And what could you do to frighten off somebody who was so absorbed in soap operas that she didn't even notice the world around her? All of a sudden, she remembered the meatloaf and potatoes she was supposed to have put in the oven. Katie spun and ran to the kitchen, turning on the oven and getting out the meatloaf Monica had made the night before. Usually, they bake such things at 350. Would it cook fast enough if she turned it up to 400? She stuck the meatloaf in and got out the potatoes. At home, Grandma put big, clean nails through the potatoes to make them cook faster. But Katie couldn't find any nails in Monica's kitchen. Well, they'd bake at 400 degrees too, she thought, so maybe it would work out right. Maybe she ought to turn it back down to the... Maybe she ought to turn the heat up to 500 degrees. She could turn it back down to the right temperature just before Monica got here, and nobody would ever know the difference. She went back to her post in the hallway, waiting for people to show up. Somebody did, although she didn't know who he was. He was about as old as Nathan, she guessed, only she liked his looks better. He didn't have a beard, and he had a nice, friendly face. He parked his car in the lot in the space for 3A, which probably didn't matter since Mr. P didn't have a car, and came toward the front door below her. When he looked up and saw Katie, he waved. The new man was tall and had sandy hair and blue eyes. Katie was very conscious of eye color now. She kept hoping she'd find someone who had silvery eyes like her own. Of course, the newcomer was much too old to have been exposed to that experimental drug or whatever it was, but maybe that wasn't the only thing that gave people special abilities. Hi, he called up to her. Do you know if there's any furnished apartments available in this building? I'm looking for one. Kitty leaned over the railing. I don't know. The sign says furnished and unfurnished. My mother rented this one unfurnished a week ago. The manager lives in the basement if you want to ask him. Okay, I will. He grinned at her and went on inside. It would be nice, Katie thought, if Mr. Pollard moved out and this man moved in. He didn't look to be the type who would swear at her if he ran into her on the stairs. She saw Jackson Jones coming on his bicycle far down the street. A little dog ran after him, yapping and nipping at Jackson's pant leg. She could communicate with cats. Could she do the same with dogs? From a block away? She didn't know if she'd have to say it loud enough for the dog to hear it or not, but it was worth a try. Stop that, she said aloud. Jackson's a nice boy. Don't bite him. Of course, the dog couldn't hear, but it suddenly stopped running after Jackson and trotted back to its own yard. So she didn't know if she'd communicated or if the dog had simply gotten tired. That was something most people couldn't do either, talk to dogs or cats. Well, of course, anybody could talk to them, but most people didn't get answers back. Not that she'd gotten an answer from the dog, but he'd done what she'd said. She wondered what old Dusty would have had to say if he'd been able to get him to respond. Dusty had been an old dog when she went to live with Grandma Welker, and he'd gone to live with the Tanners when Grandma died. He'd been a nice old dog, and even if he didn't talk to her, she missed Dusty. Katie turned her head and saw that Mr. P was getting off the bus in the opposite direction. He shawed Jackson Jones, broke his stride, and then continued more slowly, carrying his jacket because it was so hot. She'd bet he didn't intend to pay Jackson today, either, if he could help it, Katie thought. Did he keep the boy coming back time after time? 
for his money just to be hateful? She decided that she was he was mean enough to do that. They met on the edge of the parking lot, just a few yards out from Katie's balcony. She could look down and see Mr. P's bald head, the strand of hair gone askew, and the wallet in his hip pocket, too. Katie's fingers curled around the railing. Could she work that wallet out of the tight pocket? Could I collect today, sir? Jackson Jones asked, as politely as if he hadn't tried to collect several times before. Gee, I don't think I've got anything smaller than a $20 bill, Mr. P said. I'll look and see, but I'm pretty sure I don't. He seemed surprised when the wallet almost slid out of the pocket into his hand, and then he opened it up to check its contents. Katie closed her eyes and gritted her teeth, and then looked to see how it was working. The wallet seemed to writhe in Mr. P's pudgy fingers, almost as if it were alive. Probably he'd intended only to peek in the bill compartment, but instead he suddenly found the bills sliding out past his fingers, moving with a will of their own. They eluded his grasp and went sailing off in several different directions. Mr. P yelped and grabbed, nearly falling over his own feet. One bill flew right up against Jackson Jones' shirt and stuck there until Jackson put a hand over it. This one here is a 10, Mr. Pullard, Jackson said. I can make change for that. Mr. Pullard, however, wasn't listening. He was pursuing his money. One bill skidded merrily across the sidewalk, defying his efforts to put a foot on it, to step on it. Another lodged in a tree branch, blending in with the leaves, and a third wafted to the feet of the man who had just been looking for an apartment just as he came out the front door. Hey, what's going on? The newcomer picked up the bill, examined it, and then spotted the twin to it in the tree. Whose money? Yours? He asked Jackson Jones. Jackson was busy writing out a receipt. Well, part of it's mine to pay for the paper. The rest of it belongs to him. He gestured toward Mr. Pollard, who had finally managed to capture the last of the bills and was cautiously drawing it out from under his foot. Mr. Pollard was red-faced and perspiring when he came back and accepted Jackson's receipt. He looked up and saw Katie, and his face got even redder. Funny, he said to no one in particular, how that kid is always around when things fly in all directions. Oh, how's that? the newcomer asked. Mr. P. muttered something Katie didn't understand, and she didn't think the other man understood it either. My name's Cooper, the man said. Adam Cooper. I just rented apartment 2C. Are you one of my neighbors? Hal Pollard, 3A. Mr. Pollard admitted, accepting the bills that Mr. Cooper handed over to him. Thanks. I hope we got it all. What happened? A sudden gust of wind? I guess so. Excuse me. I think I'll take a swim before supper. It must be 95 in the shade. Well, at least someone was going to use the pool. Kitty wasn't sure she wanted to share it with nobody but Mr. P, though. Jackson Jones called. Hey, thanks, Mr. Pollard. And then he looked up at Katie and grinned. See you later, he said. Adam Cooper still stood below her. Hi again. Listen, are you a busy, young lady, or would you like to help me haul things in tomorrow morning when I bring my stuff over? I'll pay ya. Katie shrugged. Sure, why not? Are you going to swim in the pool? Not tonight. Maybe tomorrow. Why, do you need a swimming partner? Somebody besides Mr. Pollard, Katie acknowledged. You don't like Mr. Pollard? Adam Cooper asked. I don't think anybody likes Mr. Pollard. He kicks cats and doesn't pay his bills and he tells lies and he swears at people even when they don't do anything. That right? Sounds terrific. Tell you what, after we get my junk carried in tomorrow, we'll go swimming, okay? Okay, Katie agreed. And then, after she'd gone back inside the apartment, she wondered uneasily if her mother would agree to that or if the new tenant would fall into the category of strange men and was therefore to be treated warily. She had no sooner gotten inside than she smelled the meatloaf and potatoes. Oh no! She'd burned up their supper. Katie jerked open the oven door and the smoke poured out into the room just as Monica put her key into the lock.